All right, guys, this is David here from Forex Empire, and we'll be starting the webinar pretty soon. Just give me a moment. All right, guys, so let's get started with ADUSD as usual. Uh, give me a second. All right, so what we've seen in the past is that the price has made the W level one level two and M formation level one level two. Now the price has given us the W right about here, probably the 61.8 retracement, but it didn't play that quite well. I mean, it just went up and then came back down. But at the same time, if you look at it, it hit the 61.8, create the M right here on a smaller time frame, right about there. And the level one, level two consolidation, and a nice W at the support. So we basically got out, got out this trade, and we just waited for this trade to complete. And now we're just in a buy right now. So you just got to be patient uh, for it to play out, and we'll see how it goes. So moving forward, we're going to go on AUD CAD and see how that plays out. All right. So what do we see in... What we've seen last week is I told you guys that the price is um, at the support, but it will come back down again to do the W before it even continue to go up. So as we've seen, it hit the 38.2 retracement, and now it's continuing to go down. So what we're going to do is wait for the price to come back here, do the stop hunt. Once it does the stop hunt with a wick like this, that means it has provided us the stop and we'll just continue to go buy. All right. So I think that's about it for AUD CAD. So probably by midweek reversal, right about there. So probably going to take three, four days or maybe a week. Uh, we don't know yet, but let's see how now, how, how is it playing out. Which week is it going to be next week or this week? Okay. I think it's going to be. Yeah, midweek reversal. Okay, so most likely it's going to be a midweek reversal right about there, probably on Wednesday or Thursday. If we look at AUD CAD, it should give us a nice, um, nice uh, entry for our buy. Okay, so probably on the Wednesday I would get on it, and then moving forward, AUD CHF. All right, so AUD CHF, it's looking not looking good but at the same time it's it's at the 61.8 so a lot of times price does go back up just to scare you but in a smaller time frame if you look at it w low one low two a nice m formation so it should not break this resistance point if it does then we're gonna count this as a level but if it does if it gets respected then we are in the same trend as the market maker so 
make sure uh, just to follow that. But right now, um, we just got to wait and see how it really plays out. Okay, guys? Uh, where is it coming from? 88.6 and all that. There. So much more clear vision, but on a daily time frame, what we see is it's a bigger time frame. So W11 level two and formation, it's at the resistance point. So we might see something uh, from this point, we should see a nice impulse to the downside. So just, just wait along and let, let it play out. All right, moving forward would be AUD JPY. All right, on a daily time frame, we have seen the wicks at the bottom. So that's a good indication. Like that's a lot of wicks right there. Doji, uh, Evening Star, Hammers. All right, so if you go on a zoomed up, on a four hour time frame, you still see that the price is just consolidating in this ranging right now. So all you gotta do is just wait a little bit. Probably you might see a nice retracement. Um, what is that, 61.8 retracement? Yeah. So that's a good indication for the 61.8 zone. So we'll just mark it up. All right, so 61.8 is a good, place to buy in and we pretty much bought in at the at the resist at the support but 60, it most likely going for the 61.8 so no big deal it should not break the support though that's why I sub, the stop loss is under the support so uh, all about waiting and patience okay with AUD JPY all right next would be AUD NZD I'm gonna try to finish it really quick guys so bear with me all right Okay, with AED NZD, um, it's probably a daily time frame. Yep, it's a daily time frame, but getting squeezed in the smaller time frame. So most likely the price might go till here at this resistance because the level one is like the W's and level ones are small. So most likely it's going to squeeze into the smaller time frame from a bigger time frame. I mean, this is a four hour time frame, but if you look at a daily, it's much more clear, but but right about here, you can see the consolidation going on. It should break it, create the level two here, probably, or maybe here. We'll just have to wait and count the levels. Once we count the levels, we'll know when to exit the market. But right now, we're on a buy, so no big deal. Stop loss at break even, so that's a good trade. All right, now, next would be a EU, Euro CHF. So Euro CHF on a smaller time frame, four hour time frame, level one, level two, and the mark the market hasn't went back up to give us the M formation yet. So probably just have to wait. Or maybe sometimes a lot of times it just does a top and then drops it down. So right now we are seeing the trend line retest. So right now, if you zoom in, the price this this candle, if it closes under, then it means it's going to continue to go down. But if it doesn't, then most likely it's going to go back up. So uh, no worries on this end. So we'll just see how it really plays out, okay? Now, EuroCAD. Our EuroCAD is a tough situation here. Most, most of the people don't even understand this part. But if you look at a bigger time frame, right? The one peak formation, right? The peak formation, level one, level two, and an M formation with a nice divergence. But if you zoom in right here, if you continue counting from this side, that's an M formation, level one, and a level two, and a W is getting for basically getting formed at the 61.8. So what does that mean? Does it mean I mean in a bigger time frame, it's on the second level because the base is broken that's the second level of consolidation now if you mark this up you will find the zone two this is the zone two right about here so what can we expect uh, a lot of times what i do is if the market it has a bigger structure but it forms a smaller structure i basically exit my trade right about there so Probably at the 61.8, I'm going to see how it reacts to the 61.8. If it does, reacts to it, and rejects from that point, 
and does an engulfing candle right about here or something, I'm just going to exit that trade. But for now, what I see is the price will consolidate and then drop. But you never know. Um, it can continue to go back up or it can continue to go down. So I'll just have to wait and see how the 61.8 reacts to the, pr the price reacts to the 61.8 and then make my move. Should I close it or should I leave it open? But right now, all I see is down. But if there is a hammer with a nice wick at the bottom at the 61.8, nice divergence that's creating right now, it will just like make me exit the trade. But for now, uh, I'm not stressed out. Okay. All right. Now, next would be a Euro AUD. All right. Euro AUD. What have you seen? Just like that. 78.6 got retraced. Nice trend line breakout. And it's just going to be a continuation to the downside. Maybe a nice retest. Probably might go back up, do a retest, and then drop it back down. But overall, it's a nice drop. And then Euro USD. All right, now Euro USD is a tough situation because if you look in closer, if you look, I mean, if you look at the bigger picture, that's a W level one, level two, extra level, and an M formation. The level one was created, now it's at the level two. But if you zoom in, here you see a small M formation, level one consolidation level two consolidation, a nice W at the very bottom. So, and it adds a 61.8 retracement. So we have to see how the price really reacts from the 61.8 and then continue to do so. Just like the other trade, 61.8, it has, I mean, it's a strong level, but at the same time, it all depends on the price. If the price rejects from this point, I'll buy it. If, I, if it doesn't, then I'll just leave the sell open. All right? So we'll just see. We'll just see how it really plays out. But for now, for now, uh, we'll just have to wait. About there. So we'll just have to wait and see how it reacts from the 61.8. But if you go on a smaller time frame, right about there. So nice divergence right there so we'll see we really have to see how it really plays out okay one hour time frame gives you a better there better picture okay so we'll see guys right now the price we don't know yet so it all depends on the 61.8. If it rejects from it, then I might close it and then end up buying it. But right now, it's just a sell for me. Okay, um, what's next? Euro GP. All right, Euro GP has made the M level one, level two, nice W that broke the support. Now level one and a level two. Now what do we expect? a nice M formation at the 78.6 or the 88.6 and then drop it down. Or maybe it can go to the resistance point and then drop it down. So we're just gonna wait and see how it really plays out. Now onto the next one is J Euro JPY. Okay. All right, Euro JPY. The price really didn't go where we expect it to go. Um, we expected the price to go back up to the 61.8, hit that, and then bounce back. But right now, the price didn't do anything. So we're just still gonna leave it all alone um, and see how it really comes down to. But maybe we just might close it since the trend line. I mean, if the price breaks this zone, then we'll just close the sell limit. But until then, I'm just gonna leave it. All right, next would be Euro NZD. 
Okay, Euro NGD is playing out with the trend lines. Um, if you zoom in here, W level one, level two, and formation, that's a nice big level. And then if you zoom in here, four hour time frame, this is probably a one hour time frame. But if you go here, where you see the trend line has been getting respected, so that's a good sign. And we are in, in a sell on this trade, so most likely the price will continue to go down, but we'll just see how it plays out. That's a 240, uh, 2,400 pips take profit, so we'll see how it plays out, okay? All right, next would be uh, CHF pairs. Okay, CHF, JPY. Okay, CHF, JPY on a daily time frame, on a smaller time frame, didn't get respected. So it's not a valid trade anymore. But once it get, once it forms a pattern, then we'll jump back in again. But right now, it looks like the market just went chop sideways. So we're not going to look at it. But CAD, JPY. All right, CAD JPY kind of played out really nice. Uh, create the W at the breakout, we pretty much ended up buying. And then you can see the price is consolidating in this range. But now once the price, it's still above the 200 EMA, it means the bullish, it, it's still bullish. So we have, we gonna see some type of in, engulfing, um, engulfing or impulse right about this zone. So once this breaks through, then we're gonna start counting our second level, and then M formation right about there, and maybe a reversal right at that 9150. 9150 might be a reversal. So we'll just see how it plays out, okay? Uh, that's CAD JPY. Next would be CAD CHF. All right, CAD CHF is the same thing. M level one, level two, nice W level one, level two. Now we're going to see, we have seen the, nah, I'm not sure if it's a level, um, but it can be the first leg. The second leg probably going to be here, but we'll see. Once the market gives us a second leg, that's when we're going to look for a sell. Until then, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rush for it. Okay, now let's get on GPCHF and see how it goes. So the price was W level one, level two, a nice M formation. Now we saw the breakout, the retracement of the 61.8 and the breakout again. So we are still in the consolidation right now. So we'll just have to wait. And so hold on a minute. If you zoom in. Hmm. Okay, I have to see in a smaller time frame to see it better. Mm, one, two, two, peak formation, one, two. Information here, drop one, level two. All right, so right about here, I mean, in a smaller time frame, it is like a small levels, level one, level two, and a nice W with a nice divergence also. But, and we can see that the price is giving us, and there's a 200 EMA support, so. 
I'll wait. Um, the price is not, let's see how much is in profit. It's 100 pips in profit. Um, it's not an easy trade, guys. Okay, so the base is right about there. The one consolidation. This is level two consolidation. And then there's a W right about there with the divergence. And if the price does want to go back up again, we're more likely going to go all the way till here. So, Hmm. All right, guys, so um, uh, We'll come back to this one. Maybe I might close it, but right now for 100 pips, I might move my stop loss to break even. That's about it with this one. Since I don't know what's going on, the smaller structure kind of fades out. It, they don't play out like like a four hour time frame. The smaller time frames are not that good, but a lot of times they do get respected too. So you gotta see how it really plays out. but. Okay, GBCHF. To the next one that will be GPCH uh, GPJPY. All right, GPJPY. Pretty much, we've seen that the market has given the M level one, level two a nice W, but the level one consolidation was still here. But then the price went back up again, did the impulse consolidation, and then pretty much I predicted that this is gonna be a level two consolidation right about there. But the price, when the price broke in the trend line, it just basically made the whole level into one level. So right about there, right about there. So it, it, this is a whole one level. So it, it was kind of tough, but when I looked at the weekly time frame, it is at the resistance. I mean, it is at the, ugh, what am I saying here? It is at the support right about there. You can see that, that there's a support with a weekly time frame. 
So that's a good indication. And the previously, when the price did an impulse right about there, that's a level. Remember, consolidation and an impulse. And this was a one level one consolidation. If you want me to draw it right about there, you can see that it's a big consolidation. And you can see that the price, the second consolidation was right here. And if I draw it here, let me draw it there. And the divergence right about there. Okay, so what do you expect? You expect a re, um, rejection from that point. So if you zoom into the smaller time frame, it's basically showing us what is it doing. And then at the same time, it does have a harmonic pattern to it also. So that's a good indication for us that the price most likely gonna reach this uh, resistance and above. So it's a good, this is a good buy. Um, most likely the level two gonna become created here, but we'll just have to wait and see how it really plays out. But for now, this is a nice buy at, at the previous support of the W. So we'll just have to wait and see guys, okay? Now, onto the next trade is GPNZD. And then GPNZD, um, it's a nice breakout, trendline breakout. You can see the big impulse. So most likely it's gonna be a nice uh, bear wedge at the same time in a technical point of view. Um, and then it's pretty much a bearish trend right now. So we'll just have to wait and see guys how it plays out, okay? Now GDP AUD, All right, GDP AUD is in profit also. And right now probably most likely it's gonna come down. Um, I might go up, do a retest right about there and then continue to go back down. So we'll just uh, mark it up. We'll see how it really plays out, okay? All right, next is GPCAD. All right, GPP CAD is in a breakout also. W level one, level two, a nice M formation. And a nice uh, retest right there at the 200 EMA. So after that retest, the price might go back up uh, to do the trend line retest and then continue to go back down or just consolidate or break through and then consolidate and then drop it back down. So we'll just have to wait and continue to see how it really plays out, okay? Now, the last one would be for GBP is GBP USD. Same situation here, uh, probably in a bigger time frame, daily time frame. As you can see that the price has made the M formation. Now it might go back up again or it just do a consolidation. But the moment it goes up here, I'm going to look for a sell right over there and my take profit is going to be right on the bottom. So we'll see. I mean, if the market comes back up, we're definitely going to sell it. If it doesn't, then most likely no, because we don't have a better entry. So that's a basically we're talking how many pips? Like 200 pips? Yeah, 200 pips gap. So the price can go back up and then drop it back down. But if you go on a smaller time frame, we might can we can see something going on here. Um, nope, we don't see anything. Nope, we don't see anything on a smaller time frame. So all we gotta do is just wait and let it play out, okay? All right, next is NZD JPY. All right, NZD JPY is in a nice cell and it's continuing to drop and that's a good thing. And you can see that there was a big impulse. There's a two, two impulse candles. So I think this is a first leg of the W, but I'm just gonna have to wait and see if it gets respected in this zone, most likely it's gonna continue to go back down here, anywhere 88.6, if, we, if, we're, if we're talking, let's see. Mm. Yeah, currently it's at that 78.6, so, most likely it's gonna to continue to do, uh, go down to the 88.6 and then retrace back. If not, it might go to the support and then continue to go back up. So 
most likely we're in a sell. That's a good trade actually. So, but we'll just have to wait. Okay. All right. Next is NZDCHF, and that's basically retracing up right now. So most likely probably sixty one point eight. Where is that? Right about there. Okay, so mm, there's a W, the one level two, M formation. So, mm, and that's a W in a smaller time frame. Okay, there's a smaller time frame going on here. You can see that there's a peak, level one consolidation, level two consolidation, a nice W with a divergence. This is a nice level one consolidation. That's a level two consolidation. And then most likely the price is gonna go back up, do the M formation and then drop it back down. So, and it respected at the 61.8. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back in once, if it does go back to the stop loss at break even, no big deal, we'll jump back in again. But what we know where the market is now, so it's basically creating a smaller time frame structure so that's a good sign at the same time but there one level two right about there okay There, you guys can see that now. So let's wait it out and see how it plays out. But most likely 61.8, 78.6, 88.6, or the resistance. So there. So we'll see. We'll see how it really plays out. But right now it's playing the smaller time frame. So, uh, but overall the bigger trend is basically a down. Okay. All right, next is NZD USD. And all right, now NZD USD is the same scenario, just like NZDC, uh, uh, what was that? NZD CHF. NZD, CH, uh, NZD USD has a bigger time frame, but on a bigger time frame, we have a smaller time frame. The M, level one, level two, a nice W is getting formed right about there at the support area. But that was a previous resistance. So. We'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait and see if the price comes down, does a, does the consolidation, or just consolidates and then drops it down again. So we are counting the levels right now at the level two. So it's a tough situation, but we'll see. We'll see how it reacts to the support. If it rejects from it, then we'll sell it. If it doesn't, then we'll still. Uh, I mean, if it rejects from it, then we'll buy it. But if it doesn't, then we'll stay in the sell. Okay. All right, NZD CAD. All right, NZD CAD is basically um, there. Basically, it's at the level one consolidation based on the W level one, level two M formation. Now it's, there's a M. Uh, there's a level one consolidation. Now, most likely, the price might go back up here and then continue to go back down, but. At the end of the day, we just have to wait and see. All right. Now, USD CAD is a nice, nice setup. M formation level one. I call it A1, and then A2, W, uh, V1, and V2, and then M formation. So, what we see here, there is a smaller structure also. The peak. The level one consolidation, the level two consolidation, then there is a W at the 61.8. The, the peaks always form at the support of the resistance or the 61.8. Remember that. So, and then here is the 61.8 also. So, what do we expect? On a bigger time frame, the price is still a bearish trend. On a bigger time frame, it's still a bearish trend. This is a level one consolidation. But on a smaller time frame, this is a W, this is a level one consolidation. Right now, we do have a small stop loss. That's a 1% stop loss. 
So we'll just have to wait and see how it reacts. If the price does shoot back up, then the smaller smaller time frame is the winner. But if it does reacts reacts from the 61.8, then the bigger time frame is the winner. So we'll just have to wait. This is a consolidation zone. We just have to wait for the price to break out through, and then we can decide. Right now, it it's undecisive. It's basically consolidating for a while. So you gotta give it a minute or so, not a minute, but probably a week or so to decide, okay? All right, now, next would be USDJPY. And then for USDJPY, uh, it's on a daily time frame, looks like, yep. So, not really on the, but here. That's an M level one, level two, W formation. Now we are in a level one consolidation. So. Most likely the price might come down a little bit more and hit that support and then push back up or just make consolidation, just do an impulse and push back up. So we'll just have to wait and see, but overall we are in profit, so that's good. And then next would be USD CHF. All right, USD CHF, we pretty much ended up closing at 650 pips, take profit, and then the resistance is coming down pretty hard. So, and from that point, from the resistance, we might see a retracement, not a bearish trend. It's a retracement of a 300 pips. So, I mean, I'm not, sh I mean, let's see. It's gonna be around 300 pips right at the 200 EMA. So we'll just have to wait guys. I'm not sure with this one, but after it reacts to the resistance, I might sell it, I might not, because the rule is that don't trade level two. Only trade the peaks and level one. So I gotta be careful what I trade here. Now, if this comes down here and does a consolidation, does, excuse me, uh, it does a consolidation and then goes back up and then does an M, I'm definitely gonna sell it for the second leg, but right now it's undecisive. But we took a profit already, that's a good thing. So we'll just have to wait and wait for our next profit, basically next trade. 650 pips and that's a good trade from this point to this point. It took us a little while, but it, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it. Uh, 74 days, so that's around Two months? No, two and a half months or so. So, yeah, guys. So it's it it was a long trade, but at the end of the day, it was a nice take profit. All right. And yeah, pretty much that's it. Uh, what is next? Next is gold, uh, the loving pair, I guess you can call it. Um, I'm, I think we closed it last week, right before. Yeah. We closed it last week um, with 400 pips on a sell from this point to this point. So that's a good thing. Right now, we it's it just a chop. It's a big chop. And I see that the price has been respecting that this level. So most likely the price, I'm just going to have to wait for the price to break this level and then make a move. But right now, Gold is not a, one of my favorite pairs right now because it's been playing out pretty well for the past few months, but now it's getting a choppier and choppier. So, no, nah, not a good setup. So we'll just stay away from it. Find a different one. There's 30 pairs among all the all the tradable pairs that I trade. There's 31 altogether, including gold. So, out of all 31, you can find one good trade and just trade it for the whole week. You know. Uh, you don't have to chase trades. You just wait for the trade to come to you. You don't trade it. Uh, you don't chase the trade. My bad. My lip is twisting. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, I think this that's about it. So uh, I'll catch you guys next week with, uh, not next week, probably on Wednesday with the uh, midweek reversal. So most likely all the AD pairs that we saw uh, might form a good setups for us to enter but right now today i don't think there was a good lot of pairs that to be traded so it is only one gbp jpy trade and that's about it 
uh, USDCHF, let me delete that by also. There, we're not in it. So, um, GBP, JPY was the only trade that we entered this week, and it's pretty much taking off right now. So, that's a good thing. So, we'll see. We'll see how it, how it plays out with GBP, JPY. But right now, it's looking good so far. So, all right, guys. See you guys next week. And talk to you guys soon.